Thank you very much. I'm incredibly grateful to Walter, who's just explained the tumour to you in detail, saving me a great deal of work. Thank you, Walter. Um, I'm, I'm even more grateful to the Brain Foundation. It's a, it's a real honour to be here, and um, the weather is certainly better than in Melbourne, so that's a plus too. Um, I want to tell you a bit about what it means for me to receive a gift of this sort um, from this organisation, and what that means in terms of progressing my research. Now, I'm training to be a neurosurgeon, and in the course of my work in hospitals around Australia, I have become increasingly dis dismayed and distressed um, by the following scenario. So I want you to imagine um, it's two in the morning in an emergency department, and I'm being called to see a patient who's come in with a headache and they've had a seizure or a funny turn, and the whole family is there and everyone's really distressed. And in their hands, they're clutching this packet, and it's a scan that the GP has organised. And I open up that packet, and I have a look at it, and there's a lump in the brain. And when I see that lump, my heart sinks, because I know that there is nothing good that looks like that on a scan. And I know that if this is an aggressive tumour, if it is a glioblastoma, then this is the lump that will limit my patient's life. So then I go through the process of explaining to them what it is that we can do for them in the next days, weeks and months. And you've had some of that described to you already. But I know that what we're able to offer them is not enough. And I've watched my colleagues in other tumour streams, people working in breast cancer or melanoma, have wonderful breakthroughs with amazing new biological treatments for these cancers. And I've seen them shift the dial for their patients. And more than anything else, I want that for my patients. So I've embarked on a journey of learning to be a scientist, not just a surgeon. Because as you've already heard, this isn't a surgical disease. The answers are in the lab. So my work focuses on a protein called the epidermal growth factor receptor. This protein lives on the surface of cells. <clears throat> and in normal cells, it helps them to grow and develop. In brain tumor cells, it can be um, overexpressed. There can be too much of it. It can be improperly folded. It can have mutations. And in those cases, it can be driving the cancer. Um, and so what we are focusing on in my lab, and it is a lab that has a lot of expertise with this receptor and has um, contributed to significant breakthroughs in EGFR structure and function in the past, is we're actually having another look at the structure in light of some of the novel agents that have arisen, some of these small molecule agents, some of the immunotherapies that have become available, ways of hijacking the cell's equipment to kill the cell. And we're isolating this receptor on little tiny slips of um, uh, basically little bit of lipid with a little ring around it called nanodisks so that we can have a look at those uh, receptors in detail and then see what happens to the structure of the receptor as we add combinations um, of, of different agents that are available. At the end of the day, what we'd like to be able to do is to stop these cancer cells uh, from growing. And if we can kill those cancer cells, then my patients will get to live. So thank you for your help with that.